It took Linux eight years to go from 1% to 2% desktop market share, then just two years to hit 3%, then less than a year to reach 4%. And now, currently in the USA, is past 5%. Some sources say 6%. This isn't linear growth anymore. This is exponential, and it's accelerating. Entire governments are ditching Windows. Gamers are switching. Even your non-tech-savvy relatives are asking about it. So what changed? Why is 2025 the year Linux finally broke through? Here are five reasons why everyone's leaving Windows for Linux. Reason number one, entire governments have figured out that Windows is expensive, invasive, and unreliable, and they're done with it. Let's start with Germany. The state of Schleswig-Holstein just completed a massive migration in October 2025. They moved 30,000 government employees, over 40,000 mailboxes from Microsoft Exchange to open source alternatives, and they're ahead of schedule. But they didn't stop there. They're now rolling out Linux desktops with KDE Plasma to replace Windows entirely. A complete government fast structure moving out of Windows. Even France, their national gendarmerie, has been running 37,000 desktops on Linux since 2013. Italy's Ministry of Defense has over 5,000 machines on LibreOffice. This isn't just for the use of it anymore. This is institutional adoption at a massive scale. You can actually game on Linux now. And I don't mean indie titles and emulators, I mean AAA games. Linux gaming just hit 3.2% on Steam, an all-time high. Now a big chunk of that is the Steam Deck, which runs Linux out of the box. But here's what's interesting. Regular desktop Linux gaming is growing too. The reason? Valve's Proton compatibility layer. It lets you run Windows games on Linux with performance that's often identical to native Windows. Sometimes it's even better. I'm talking about Elden Ring, Cyberpunk 2077, Baldur's Gate 3. These are games that people play. And they work. Five years ago, gaming was the number one reason people said they couldn't switch to Linux. That excuse is basically gone as of now. Not for every game. Sure, they are competitive multiplayer with kernel-level anti-cheat. But for the vast majority of games, Linux handles it well. And when Windows 11 keeps breaking with updates while Linux just works on improving. That's a pretty compelling pitch to gamers who are tired of blue screens and broken patches. Microsoft keeps releasing updates that break the core functionality, and people are getting tired of being the unpaid beta testers. July 2025, Microsoft pushed updates that caused black screens on login, start menus that wouldn't open, file explorer crashing repeatedly, settings apps refusing to launch, and it took them until November to even publicly acknowledge the problem. Then in October, they broke local host for web developers. Task Manager started creating many processes. File Explorer in dark mode started flashing white light. Intel Arc GPU users got constant blue screens. Do you know what actually helps you understand why systems break? This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant made me a better problem solver. I'm not just talking about finding bugs, I mean actually understanding the logic behind how systems work and where they fail. What I've been working through is their algorithmic thinking course. It focuses on structuring logic, ensuring correctness, and efficiency which is clearly something Microsoft's quality control team could use right now. You don't just memorize concepts. You get hands-on with problems until they actually make sense. You learn through active problem solving, a method research has shown is way more powerful than just watching lectures. What I love is that Brilliant personalizes everything for you. It starts you at the right level, designs practice sets based on how you're doing, and helps you advance at your own pace. I can keep learning on my phone, even when I'm testing which Windows update broke. To try Brilliant for free, go to brilliant.org slash syshack, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also giving you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. So back to the video. And Microsoft's solution is that users to manually type some PowerShell commands to re-register system packages. This is insane for an operating system people have paid for. Meanwhile, Linux updates just work. However, don't get me wrong, Linux is not immune to update problems. Issues can and do occur, particularly related to graphics driver specific hardware configurations or rolling release distributions. Linux is genuinely easy to use now. I'm not talking about the command line only systems from 2005 that required a computer science degree to install. Modern Linux distributions like Linux Mint, Pop.OS, and Ubuntu are gorgeous, intuitive, and user friendly. And installing is pretty easy, it's just few screen just like on Windows. And for installing software, there is software that works like Microsoft Store. And for gaming, use Steam, which installs game with just one click and Proton handles the rest. The old excuses don't hold up anymore. And here's what Linux does better. No forced telemetry. No data collection you can't disable. No ads in your start menu. No forced Microsoft account. No AI screenshot feature recording everything you do. It respects you as a user. 
And in 2025, that's become a selling point. So there you have it. Governments are switching because it's cheaper and more secure. Gamers are switching because it actually works now. Windows 10 users are switching because they have no other choice. Frustrated Windows 11 users are switching because updates keep breaking their computers. And everyone's realizing that Linux isn't scary anymore. From 1% to 5% took a decade. At this rate, we could see 10% by 2027. And that's when things get really interesting, because that's when software developers start treating Linux as a primary platform instead of an afterthought. The Linux tipping point isn't coming. It's already here. Have you switched to Linux yet? Are you thinking about it? Or do you think Windows is still the better choice? Let me know in the comments. I read every one, and I'm genuinely curious. If you found this useful, smash that like button and subscribe for more tech content. I'll see you in the next one.